Hello, everybody. A very warm welcome to our new presentation for Software in the Loop. Um, actually, it is, I think, the fifth or sixth presentation. So we have done the Hill presentation for all of you. You haven't seen the Hill Hardware in the Loop presentation. You can have a look at um, YouTube. There you can find um, the videos on for this presentation. This one is a live presentation today. So we show you live um, the test cases and the test um, facility here on the um, software in the loop. Software in the loop is a system which is used for software developers which want to test their stuff independent um, according to a EV or EVSE. So if you develop an EV, our system can be used as an EVSE. If you are working with an, or if you are developing an EV part of software, you can use the, our system as an EVSE. Uh, my name is Bernd Baranski. I don't know, a lot. Uh, some of you may, may know me even in person. Um, I'm meanwhile, since 12 years in e-mobility um, consulting and uh, I'm also belonging to the writing members of the ISO 1511-8 and DEAN 7121 at the first editions. And since this time, I've done a lot of um, charging stations and EV um, situations and EV testing and a lot of things. Um, now we want to show you our um, SIL system, which is developed with Eclipse Signer, and therefore I have here Jeff. Hi, uh, I'm Evgeny Kuhn. Uh, I'm one of the developers at Eclipse Signer, and I'm part of this project since the beginning. Okay, uh, let's directly start um, to present our system. Uh, for those of you who have uh, watched the um, Hardware in the Loop, um, a presentation, you can see that our software in the loop is very similar to the hardware in the loop. What's missing here is all content which is used to configure and use the um, hardware test device, which we have, because this is just software without any. On the right side, you can see the message window where the if the test cases are running you have here the the output of the actual logs on on the left side you have everything which is used to uh, configure the system and um, for example we have here the mode which is device under test is ev or device under test is evse so our system is always the opposite that means if there's written sut is ev then we are handling as an evse um, we have here auto settings, so this is um, used to, if it is e or just to easily um, set up the system. Um, if you do not hook this, the settings will be used as they are used in the settings. We describe them later. Um, we first of all, you need if you st start up this the first time, you need to decide if it is um, your where is your device connected? That means here, in this case, we have Ethernet. We have also a lot of other um, interfaces. If you click on it, you can decide um, if it is, for example, running in a, on the same PC, then you need to have a loopback. If, it is, if our test system is connected via Ethernet, you use the Ethernet connection. Um, that's for, for the... Um, yeah, that's needed for the software because also in the settings you need to configure the interface which you want to use. Okay, so let's have a look at the settings. In, in the setting cases, we have, um, first of all, the test report. That means if the software is not only simulating, if you run really test cases, then you can add here uh, who is... Um, or what is the version for of the test or the session name? Uh, then you have the tester. Then you have the version of your hardware, which is uh, or your software, which is tested. You have the version of the test system you can enter here. 
and you have a short description why what you want to test with these tests then you can save all the uh, things but um yeah let's go through the rest first so connection is um everything which is related to the communication in the v2g protocol that means the the tcp ip addresses the ports and so on um the certificate we leave out here because for tls we will do a separate presentation because there's a lot of things which you need to know in advance if you don't have had anything to do with tls you need to have a short description what is tls why it is done and so on so on so we leave that out then we have pixit uh, pixit are the parameters um, which are described in the norm um, mainly all parameters some uh, system parameters are also in here which you need just to configure your test case run um, yeah we have also the the timers which are separated um, all timers from the norm timeouts and performance timers and so on these timers could be used to change um, the flow for example you are um, working on a function which is communicating in power delivery and from test case run you end up at session setup because one of your colleagues has done something mysterious i don't know so when you now change the timer for this particular um, function you can overcome this problem and it run out um, to your power delivery so that you can do your test case but there are um, more um, timer related things if you have for example a test system with a hill with a hardware in the loop really uh, where your hardware is for some not known reasons too slow you can't perform these test cases because the timings are too hard for your hardware then you can change here um, the parameters just to get the test cases running but um, you need to think about that whatever you do here in extending these times um, it will not longer um, be a test case according to norm so you need to step back to the norm values here if you want to have a norm relevant um, test behavior then we have module parameters module parameters are belonging to hardware that means also in the communication you have um, maximum voltage of battery minimum voltage of battery maximum power consumption maximum power transfer voltages amps and so on so on which are here configured um, for example um, if you configure a battery between 400 and 300 volt um, means minimum voltage is 300 maximum voltage is 400 and an soc with 20 percent then the system will um, transfer as a value um, 320 volt for pre-charge because this should be the voltage be, uh, for 20 percent soc and um, due to the 400 volt battery maximum voltage the system will evade 500 volt for the um for the isolation monitoring so in the isolation monitoring it's 500 volt communicated and in the um, pre-charge at 320 volt communicated even if you do not have any hardware around this but if you want to have certain numbers in this in the communication then you need to configure here whatever you need for your test okay um the global variables we left out because they are more or less for the hardware system and um but what we can uh, say um what we need to tell here is that we have load and save which is you can save this test parameters with a special name so that you can reload this test parameters and run the test again you did once um, same we have also on the um, for the test cases um, itself whatever test yeah you, exactly for the test case selection we have here um, the ISO V2G um, test cases and the DEAN test cases 
so they are grouped in ISO V2G AC only. We have ISO V2G common, which is AC and DC, which is always the 15.11.8 is um, used here, and also the DC, which are DC only test cases for ISO 15.11.8. And we have the DIN test cases, um, which are in the in the back. So Jeff has already prepared a test case selection, but whatever, if you want, you can load these already prepared test cases. But um, for those who have, for example, only the simulation and want to add test cases, we have here the possibility in this window to manage test case packages. So when you buy a new package, you can add it here and it's then in the system available. Um, if you have selected test cases as we have here prepared for the presentation, um, you can store these by a safe test case selection and then give a name. And to load it again, you can reload it. But take into account that for all these test case runs, always the settings um, of the parameters are belonging to the test case selection because you have always two files which you need to load. If you want to <coughs> redo the exactly same test, this is the settings need to be reloaded and the test case selection need to be reloaded. Then you can perform exactly the same test. If you forgot, for example, to reload the settings, you get different settings and maybe you get different results. Okay, I think uh, we have, we can see, or we will see here uh, a test case run of a few selected test cases, and um, Jeff will perf um, will focus you through the uh, parameters of the sequence charge and the communication states and so on during the test case run. Okay, so please start. Um... As this, as this is, uh, as we are simulating the charging station, I have to start to start the test case, and then I have to start the uh, system that I want to test. So right now, um, I I tested, I'm testing uh, um, the software with the, with following test cases. I can see here which test case is currently ongoing and which test case is already passed or which test case are pending. As well as on the right side, I can see the timeline of where we are and how far did we get into the communication. This is what we can see on this part that is always growing. Each green dot here means an event or a message happened while the red uh, squares, they mean that something uh, went wrong. So that was an error. On the bottom, I can see the same information in a tabular form. So in a, in, a, in a table format. And here I can also um, move the information around and for example, make it bigger or smaller so that I can see what's important for my current uh, view. Uh, I can see here the IPv6 address and the port. In this case, if I were to have Mac-based Mac communication, I would also see the Mac address if I have it available uh, as this is still, uh, for uh, only V2G uh, behavior, we have only the IPv6 address and the port as uh, for the source and for the destination. And uh, if we go further down, we can see here the messages, different messages, and we can see here the white spaces. Those white spaces are events and information, internal information about uh, how the data was handled, for example, in this case, the response was interpreted correctly. And I can then also check out the, um, the messages themselves once they are finished, once the test run is complete. And on the top here, I have a sequence window. In this window, I can see which test case, uh, the communication for the test cases as a message sequence chart. As you can see here, we have the UDP and the TCP communication very, very well visible and can very quickly discern what is currently happening in the communication and what errors occurred. For example, if I have um, some messages sent multiple times, I can see it here very, very quickly and with a single glance. 
while when checking out the communication state and the lock, for example, if I have a very long test case or many test cases, then it's a little bit harder to find the the, the messages and see on a on a very uh, quick uh, view what exactly happened and if, for example, I send charge parameter discovery five times one after the other, I, it's a little bit harder to miss. It's a little bit harder to uh, to see it at the first uh, with the first glance. Otherwise, I can check out the messages here. And I can see, for example, what was the response that our system gave to the request to the uh, payment selection, uh, payment service selection request, and uh, what the request was. So I can unfold every every single message, and I can see it here um, in detail. Uh, otherwise, once I'm done, I can also create a full overview, a test report. For this test report, I will just create a test report. So EV presentation. Um, so I created the test report. And for this test report, it was under documents and presentation. This was the test report. So uh, on this test report, I can see uh, the summary of when when did I test, what uh, who tested it, what was the version that we tested with. And I can see here a description of how many test cases I had in total. I had 10 test cases. Of those 10 test cases, I can see that nine of them were successful and one of them failed. And then I have the in, in a table down below a summary about each test case and if it failed or if it didn't fail. If I click on it, it jumps to the test case itself with a test description, with a link to the XML file. This is the communication that was performed between both parties in an XML format, for example, for further um, integration in, in your system. And I have a reason why it failed. So for example, in this case, uh, the expected message was the power delivery request. Instead, we got the support app protocol because our uh, system under test wants to start the communication in you. Uh, I can also see here the picks and pixels that are set for this test case and that are aligned to that uh, or that, uh, that are defined for this test case. And if I, yeah, exactly. This is for the test uh, for test report, what I can see here. Uh, if I switch back to the communication state of my uh, of my uh, of my of our software, we can zoom in here and we can see here here we can see the same. Uh, reason of why it failed. So we, we received something that we didn't expect. And in this case, it was the support app protocol request that we did that we expected while we were in the state of power delivery request. And then we can see here as well, when the test case finishes and it starts and all the information in between. Also in here, the XML data is decoded for your convenience and for uh, in easy viewing, I can see on one glance what the what the data was for this test case during this com this uh, message. Okay, so um, coming back to the test report because I think we need to describe a little bit more about the test report. Yes, in the test report, um, it is an overview and um, um, an extract of everything which we have here, but in, in addition, we have also uh, all the communication stored in XML format. So can you please open one of these XML files? Yes. Here we can see really the XML text. Okay, it's uh, for, for um, just to use XML format for further analyze in different systems. We have stored it exactly the full communication in XML because also in the norm and everywhere XML is used as a common interface and the common language um, to, to communicate with everything. So lots of um, systems, if uh, companies are working with, they use XML format for further analysis, for um, storing and, and uh, whatever. 
So we have here three different files as log files. We have one, which is um, the, the report itself. We have the report in XML format. We have also a log file, which is um, PCAP because in most or in a lot of the cases, um, PCAP is also interesting for analyzing. And um, we have our own log file, which is um, for the system. But um, this three are uh, stored in one test case run. One is the test report, one is the test in XML, and also the um, PCAP. And in the third, Oh no, in the fourth, I think we have the sequence charge, which uh, sequence charts. Oh, difficult word for me, uh, which is always um, also stored so that you can have also a look at these um, sequence overviews, um, which are used in, in, in the norm for a, um, for a, um, better explanation and overview and um, we, we thought that is missing in most of other test um, systems that you have an overview in a sequence charge that's the reason why we put it here okay and um, yeah the the test system itself I, I described already it's all software in the loop but if you uh, think all the presentations and the presentation modes and so on are very nice. You can easily also add a hardware to the system so that you can run the same behavior, the same test cases, the same you have storage um, also with the hardware so that you can repeat your test cases which you've done on the software in the loop also on a hardware system when you buy our Hill system in addition. But the same um, way of settings and um, test case selections and so on and so on could be used also by the hardware in the loop system. Yeah, I hope um, our presentation was quite nice for everybody viewing what we are doing here and um, hope it is interesting for everybody to see um, or to want to use our system. If you have any questions, um, please put it down to the box or write us an email which will um, maybe be more sufficient because on an email uh, we can better answer and can send better um, pictures and and so on to explain whatever is needed if um, a presentation in your company is wished um, you can also um, contact us by um, email and yeah i hope everything was interesting and sufficient so that's all for now <laughs> otherwise if and you missed it you can you can check out our youtube channel where we will upload this presentation and it's for in full length yeah of course that's that's clear so this one was a live presentation but this live presentation is also available per video at youtube just look at eclipse signer and you will find the youtube videos we have already uploaded okay thanks for now for watching us and have a nice day bye bye